Hey everybody, with the Athlinix 4950, for the first time AMD is offering a cheap sub $100 CPU for the new AM4 platform. The Athlinix is an excavator based quad core CPU offering 4 threads and is part of AMD's Bristol Ridge lineup. It has a base clock speed of 3.5 GHz and a max turbo core speed of 3.8 GHz. Maximum supported RAM speed by the memory controller is 2400 MHz. Excavator marks the last iteration of AMD's module-based bulldozer architecture and is manufactured with an improved 28nm process optimized for high energy efficiency, which is part of the reasons why this CPU comes with a configurable TDP. It's basically a mobile CPU put in a desktop package. As a consequence, AMD is offering a lot of 35W SKUs this time. 35W and below is where Bristol Ridge's sweet spot lies. In order to keep the core small and save energy, AMD has reduced the L2 cache to 1 instead of 2 MB, but doubled the L1 cache. Also, with Excavator, AMD has implemented ATI's high density libraries for the first time. Those help to reduce the core size by 23% compared to steamroller CPU cores. On this die shot you can see how small the CPU part in blue actually is. Also, in case of the Athlonix 4, the whole GPU part on the left side has been disabled. In contrast to Ryzen, the budget-oriented Athlon comes in a small and ordinary box and with a rather small but relatively silent cooler. The cooler was sufficient enough for my overclocking at 4.1 GHz in my tests, but it was also not that silent anymore. Like all Bristol Ridge based APUs, the Athlon is locked. But ACES as an exception is offering free multiplier selection on their B350 or X370 mainboards. Now let's go to the benchmarks. My test setup is based on 8GB of RAM, an ACES Prime B350MA mainboard and a KB Lake Pentium G4560 processor as reference. All games were run at 1080p, medium to high details and medium anti-aliasing. So let's go! The Athlon has a turbo core speed of 3.8 GHz, but it only reaches that in more single-threaded situations like starting an application, office use and so on. But it always holds 3.7 GHz stable under full load, which is great considering it has a base clock of only 3.5 GHz. Now let's look at some scaling tests. Your mind, the 
Now to the maybe most interesting part of this review, the CTDP. The CPU offers you to choose a target TDP of 45 or 65 watts. Here we have both options in action. Can you guess which side is what? You probably think the 65 watts are on the right, but that's wrong, it's on the left. So what's happening here? Well, CTDP is especially useful on APUs, where the SOC has the CPU and the GPU to share its TDP budget with. But here in the Affluence case, there's no GPU to throttle, only CPU cores, so the 65 watt option only allows the CPU's frequency to spike to 3.8 GHz occasionally, what almost never happens under the 45 watt option. So why the hell is the 45 watt, watt option faster then? Well, on the left, in the first CPU set window, we can see the Northridge frequency. It is considerably lower than under CTDP45 on the right. Remember, the Affluent has no level 3 cache. It has a very small level 2 cache. So increasing the throughput in the Northridge speeds up the CPU disproportionately more than having a 100 MHz faster CPU core from time to time. Now let's put the 45 watt version through some games. In Battlefield 1, it beats the overclocked Affluent and comes close to the Pentium. Also in GTA 5 we see nice gains. In CPU set test we can see that the 45 watt option has a minor regression in single thread performance, but compared to the potential massive gains in gaming, this can be ignored. In conclusion, I can say that the Affluent brings enough performance to the table for a budget build. It's fast enough for most games and with around 60 bucks, relatively cheap. Just don't buy the CPU right after launch. The CTDP is a great option, improves performance in most games while reducing heat. The Affluent also has good OC potential. That being said, the Pentium G4560 is a considerably faster CPU than the Affluent. The Affluent is fast enough, but if you want the fast CPU for your money right now, then the Pentium might be the better choice. But in many countries the Pentium is hard to find, and if a shop has it, it is around 50% more expensive than the Affluent, like it is in my country. Ignoring availability and pricing, the Affluent is a great deal. If we consider the superb upgrade path we get when pairing an Affluent with a cheap B350 mainboard, you will be fine for years. So is the Affluent AMD's budget king? I would say no, it's more like a budget prince that over the long run, thanks to the projected longevity of AMD's AM4 platform, might turn out to be a royal investment for a potential buyer. Alright, that was the Alpha Linux 4 950. I hope this review was useful to you. And yeah, see you another time.